What's up, guys? It's Ian, and uh, t t a little different video today, right? Um, today I'm going to show you how to defeat Duke Vishron easily in Master Mode. And I recorded a video because I was like, okay, I'm just going to grind Duke Vishron, and then I was like, oh, I could make a video showing people how to do this. I know people struggle with this. Uh, so you can take it from me and my 3,000 hours of Terraria experience that Duke Vishron... He's not hard. He's predictable, but unless you know the pattern, you're not going to be able to beat him. Unless you get really lucky. And that's what a lot of people struggle with. They don't know that Duke Fisheron has a set pattern. And he's actually really easy once you learn that pattern. You just need the right tools. Now, this, this strategy works by just counting, basically. You're counting. You're counting and dodging. And it's, re it's, it's really easy. Uh, the way that I do it, or the way that I've done it in this playthrough, this is a master mode range playthrough that I am just that I do off camera, just having a little fun here. And you can see from these Duke Fisheron statues that I've beaten him quite a few times. So yeah, th th this strategy is pretty good. This, this strategy also, it works after the mech bosses, but it can also work before the mech bosses. If you do it before mech bosses, you're gonna want to fight. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna want to farm some angry trappers in the jungle to get an Uzi, and you're gonna want uh, to get the endless musket pouch so that you can shoot those high velocity bullets forever. Uh, my bullets of choice for this fight, either cursed bullets or high velocity bullets. They're both good. Now the difference between them, cursed bullets, you know, they travel at the same speed as the musket balls, but they also inflict cursed inferno, which is really strong. But the high velocity bullets, they're, they they're not really expensive. They're really cheap. You just need cogs from a steampunker and uh, and and bullet shells from the and bullet shells from the arms dealer. Now the cogs, high velocity bullets are post mech boss. So if you're doing this pre mech boss, use the Uzi because it shoots high velocity bullets by default. It turns normal musket balls into high velocity bullets. So you don't have to worry about going and killing a mech boss so that you can do that. If you want to fight Duke Fisheron before the mech bosses so that you can get the tsunami and then destroy the mech bosses, or the flare on and then destroy the mech bosses with that, go ahead, have some fun with this. This is easy. Now, a little disclaimer. I forgot to switch out my uh, I forgot to switch out my wings here. I am using Duke Fisheron wings. But I'm but I'd like to also explain one more thing. I'm u I'm using what you know. You might think I'm using a stupid accessory, the 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 green horseshoe balloon, right? But no, it makes you so much more mobile in the air, and it's actually really really good. You you can't really do this fight without it. Well, you can, except you're just gonna die. Especially with wings that you get before you fight Duke Fisheron, you're gonna be too slow to actually beat him with it. So let's let's actually start the video now. Uh, after that explaining there. Oh, a little mo one more thing. I used hallowed armor, but that was just because that was where I was <clears throat> in the tech tree at the time. I had already beaten mechanical bosses. I was like, screw it. I, I before I had, you know, gotten back into the rhythm of fighting Duke Fisheron because it it takes a while. You're gonna go through quite a few truffle worms before you actually perfect the technique. Uh, even between playthroughs, if you haven't played for a while. So I was like, screw it, I'm just going to fight the mech bosses. So I got hallowed armor. So, uh, so yeah, I got hallowed armor. But you can just as easily do this with adamantite or titanium armor. The holy protection buff is really, really nice sometimes, but it's not necessary to complete the fight. So without further ado, let's just get on with the video. <laughs> so this is where I could have done some explaining, but I didn't. I'm only using four buffs. I'm using the four common buffs. Regen, Iron Skin Swiftness, and Medium Improved Stall Stats. I'm also, yep, my Mega Shark and my High Velocity Bullets. I actually run out of High Velocity Bullets in this fight. So yeah, Obsidian Shield, I'm actually going to pause it right here because this is important. The Obsidian Shield is pretty much, at least the Cobalt Shield, something to make you not take knockback is pretty much required for this fight. If you get hit by a shark run and then go straight into Duke Fish run, you're going to get killed. Right? And then the Shield of Cthulhu, if you're in normal mode, it's going to be really hard, but you can, you know, you can manage without it. Because, you know, you can't get it in normal mode. 
Um, but if you're in Expert or Master mode, you're definitely going to want the Shield of Cthulhu because it provides a dash that is incredibly useful to you. And then there's the Green Horseshoe Balloon, once again, makes you incredibly mobile in the air. Then the Frostbark Boots, at least Lightning Boots. You're going to need at least Lightning Boots. These things are great. They make you so mobile in the air, and they also provide you, you know, you can run on the ground real fast. Now, the Warm Scarf isn't necessary. You can go for an Endurance Potion instead if you are on, um, if, if you're on a Crimson World, but I'm on a Corruption World, and I'm using the Warm Scarf because it's so nice. And any wings will do, as long as they're not angel or demon wings. Just any good wings will do. Frozen wings, leaf wings, um, you know, frozen wings, leaf wings, butterfly wings, harpy wings, they'll do. Uh, but you just have to have, you just have to have a balloon and, uh, and, and at least lightning boots. Now that's enough for the accessories. Let's get into the fight here. Now... I, I kind of I, I I've been farming Duke Fishron, so that's why I uh, that's why I didn't have so many bullets. I also canceled my buffs because I didn't want them to run out mid fight, and I had seven sets for seven truffle worms, seven sets of buffs for seven truffle worms. So here we go. Let's get into the fight. So yeah, get my buffs on, and then it's in. Duke Fishron is all about counting. If you don't count the dashes, then you're really going to have a bad time. See, he does his tornadoes right here. One, two, three, four, five. And then he does his bubbles. And then one, two, three, four, five. And then he does his sharknadoes. And then I kind of I messed up by putting them right in the middle of the arena. But uh, you want these to be at the edge of your arena. You don't want these things to be anywhere near the middle of the arena because that is where you will be a lot of the time when you're evading Duke Fishron, especially at the very end of the fight. So it takes 10 dashes for him to bring out his Cthulhu Nados once again. Uh, you know, if you can count. <laughs> if, if you can, you know, multiply 5 by 2, you, you'd know that. The bubbles aren't dangerous unless it's a windy day. The bubbles can be incredibly dangerous on a windy day because they can move so, so, so fast and just absolutely demolish you. So you see the general strategy right now. Count the dashes, go up and down, shoot the boss, of course, and make sure that he spawns the Cthulhu Nados on the edge of the arena. And here I ran out of the bullets that I was using. So we're on musket balls. That's fine. Don't panic if you run out. It's going to take a little bit longer to kill the boss, but that's okay. There he is, his Cthulhu Nados again. On the, on the side of the arena, which is what I like. You want to do that on the side of the arena so that you can quickly go to the other side of the arena and dodge all of the shark runs. You don't want to get hit by shark runs. They do a lot of damage. Another important thing to note is that Duke Fisheron himself, if he hits you... He, he gives you uh, he gives you feral bite, which is the same thing that cave bats and whatnot give you in expert and master mode. That gives you a random debuff every once in a while. If you get hit by Duke Fisheron, there's a chance it'll give you the confusion debuff and reverse your controls, and that is exactly what you want to not have happen. So yeah, try uh you know it sounds it sounds mean, but try not to get hit, and you'll be okay. See, he did that under underground there, so I didn't actually get to do some damage to him there. I like doing damage when he's there. Alright, count. One, two, three on the second form. And then always, always he does his bubbles on the second form first. One, two, and then three. Sometimes you have to time it. When you can't see the boss, you have to time it. You see the you see that thing that I'm ch that's chasing me right there? So that is the only thing in this fight that you want to get hit by. And you want to get hit by it at the side of the arena because that is what spawns the really, really tall Sharknados. You only want to get hit by that at the side of the arena. But if you can't, do it at the middle of the arena and try to stay near the edge. Because if those Shark Rons hit you, they do as much damage as the boss does himself. And it's kind of game over if you get hit by a lot of them. So just try to, try to you know, pop those at the sides of the arena. And once again, try not to get hit by shark runs. They're really bad for you. See, 
So once again, phase two is three long dashes, and then he does a spin where he spawns his bubbles, and then three more long dashes, and then he and then he does like the little whirlpool that spawns the Shrek, the, the, the Cthulhu Nados at you. Now you see, I, I avoided hundreds of damage by dashing into Duke Fishron at that time there. But did you see how much damage one Shark Ron did to me? I had invincibility frames, so that was one Shark Ron. Over a quarter of my health was gone. So yeah, the Shark Rons are nothing to laugh at. Alright, it's been four minutes already, as you can see by the buff counter. This fight should never take you an entire buff count. It should never take you eight minutes. If it's taking you eight minutes, you're being way, way, way too defensive and, you know, you know, just, just be, a little, be a little more offensive. Shoot a little more. It's, it's literally a game of shooting at the boss. See, he goes one, two, three, and then and then the and then the spin one, two, three, and then he shoots that thing at you that spawns the yeah it spawns the Cthulhu NATO. One, two, three. Oh no, that was the third. I counted wrong while watching the footage just then. See, sometimes it's really easy, especially when Duke Fisheron is off screen. Oh, okay, to misjudge. Now one, two. One, two, three. It goes one, two, three dashes. One, two. One, two, three. One. One, two. One, two, three. That's what's going on in my head. You just have to avoid these dashes. I get into some pretty hot water here. In this here. I also avoided 200 damage over 250 damage by dashing into the boss twice yeah uh, yeah that's the only time I've had to use the healing potion in this fight this boss is really mean but with enough perseverance and patience and learning the technique you can easily beat him he's not all that hard if you know the boss and you know it's Duke Fisher on but you know what good is Duke Fishron if he knows pattern? He's not good at all if he knows pattern. Thank you for watching. This has been the Andu thing. And hopefully, now you can kill Duke Fishron with a little more confidence.